Welcome to Pre-Calculus Notes for Essential Skill D1. This is part two. We're going to look at how we can use SOHCAHTOA to come up with trig values for important angles. So, the first thing I want you to do is read this and then see if you remember the special right triangle ratios. First, we look at the 30-60-90 triangle. We will use both 30 degrees and 60 degrees in our trig evaluations in a moment. But the ratios are, if the short side is 1, the hypotenuse will be 2, and the longer leg will be root 3. In the 45-45-90 triangle, we have 1, 1, root 2. To find the trig functions, we use SOHCAHTOA. Sine of 30 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over 2. Take a moment to fill in the rest of these. Here are the answers. Cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. Tangent of 30 degrees, once you rationalize it, is root 3 over 3. Sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. Tangent of 60 degrees is square root of 3. Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2 after you rationalize it. Cosine of 45 degrees is also root 2 over 2. And tangent of 45 degrees is 1. You will be evaluating these trig values in particular uh, more than anything else uh, over the next few months. So please make sure you're good at this. We will also extend this to obtuse angles and negative angles uh, even in, the, uh, uh, in future chapters. Uh, to develop a framework for this that doesn't rely on right triangles, we're going to relate this to points on a circle, specifically the unit circle. The unit circle is centered at the origin, and its radius is one unit. That's where it gets its name. We're going to talk about rays coming out of the center of the unit circle. And the most important one is the, uh, the one that extends to the right. That's called the polar axis. That's going to be our zero coordinate. To put these quarter circles in context, the center of the circle is the origin. So imagine an xy grid that goes 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Imagine this on a giant piece of graph paper. We're going to use that idea when we talk about coordinates of points on the circle. We're typically going to use this just for angles that come from special triangles. This makes these uh, uh, sines and cosines computable without a calculator. And so these, anytime you see a unit circle, uh, these rays will be conveniently in the locations of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, the angles from the special triangles. Our polar axis was the zero. And then we have 30 degrees. 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, representing the angle. To find the coordinates of, let's say, point A, we're going to use the fact that this is a 30 degree ray. Imagine it like a protractor. The way we're going to find the coordinates is drop an altitude. The y-coordinate will be the height of the triangle. The x-coordinate will be the base of the triangle. Since we know this is 30 degrees, we can use the 30-60-90 ratios. Our normal side ratios are 1, 2, square root of 3. But remember that this is the unit circle. Its radius is 1. This is a radius. So we're going to have to scale these down uh, by a factor of 2. So this will be 1 half. And this will be square root of 3 over 2. So our x-coordinate is square root of 3 
over 2. The y coordinate is 1 half. To fill in sine and cosine, we can either use this triangle or we can just look to the previous page where we found that sine of 30 degrees was 1 half and the cosine was root 3 over 2. To get the coordinates of point B, we need to identify which ray it's on. Identify that by the number of degrees. Remember our only choices are 30, 45, and 60, and so this will be the one in the middle, 45. Let's create a triangle. and label the angle measure. Our original side ratios are 1, 1, root 2. But this is a radius of the circle. And so we need to scale this to 1. To get this scaling done right, we divide each of the original numbers by square root of 2. When we get the x and y coordinates, we'll rationalize. Our sines and cosines, uh, we have those on the other page, or you can use this triangle, but we found them to be root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. You can probably already see the correlation that we have between the x and y coordinates of a point on the unit circle and the sine and cosine. Take a pause and see if you can do the last one. Here's how we do it. Point C is on the 60 degree ray. So when we build a triangle, we'll have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It'll just be upright. The short side is normally 1. The hypotenuse is 2. The upright leg is 3. But we need to rescale this because that is a radius of the circle. So we'll cut everything in half. By now you've probably figured out the pattern. The sine of theta will be the y-coordinate of where the theta ray intersects the unit circle. Cosine will be x. We can use this to break free of the constraints of acute triangles. We can find the sine of zero degrees, even though there is no way to draw a triangle with a zero degree angle. Similarly, the sine of 90 degrees cannot be found with a right triangle because we can't have more than one right angle. By redefining the sine and cosine in terms of the unit circle, we can look at coordinates instead of trying to build right triangles where it's impossible. Remember, the sine on the other page was given by the y-coordinate, and the cosine was given by x. Pause and try these. Here are the answers. Remember that the center of the unit circle is the origin, and the radius is 1. On a grid, that puts this point at 1, 0. Similarly, the 90 degree ray will intersect at 0, 1. Therefore, sine of 0 degrees is the y coordinate, 0. The cosine of 0 degrees is the x coordinate, 1. Sine of 90 degrees is 1. Cosine of 90 degrees is 0. You can even type these into a calculator to verify. The last thing we're going to do is extend this concept into quadrant 2 of the unit circle. We will be finding trig functions of obtuse angles. We cannot draw a right triangle, 
because 90 degrees and 120 degrees uh, make too many degrees. Uh, triangle ang angles only add up to 180. On this unit circle, take a moment, pause and label the rays in quadrant one. Move on to quadrant two if you'd like, or you can wait for the explanation. You can never have too much practice with this. We are gonna use the unit circle for everything in a lot of chapters. When labeling the rest of the unit circle, Bear in mind that the lines drawn represent special angle measures 30, 45, and 60. To get the first ray in quadrant 2, we're simply going to add 30 degrees to the 90 degree uh, ray. To get the second, we can add 45 degrees. 90 plus 45 is 135. Similarly, 90 plus 60 is 150. And then 90 plus another 90 is 180 degrees. And yes, we will be able to find sine and cosine of 180 degrees. Recall that the center of the unit circle is the origin. And then if we want to find coordinates of the 120 degree ray, intersection point. We're going to drop an altitude to the x-axis. Notice that we're always doing that. That makes things uh, much easier if you always draw your triangle connecting to the x-axis. So here's our triangle. And our central angle measure is going to be 60 degrees, the difference between 180 and 120. Next, we fill in the side ratios, short side, long side, middle side. Remember that the radius of the unit circle is 1, so we'll have to rescale. So divide everything by 2, 1 half, and 3 over 2. We're almost ready to answer the questions, but first we have one vital piece that gets uh, uh, brought in when we're dealing with quadrant two or any quadrant other than one. The signs on any grid, remember that x is less than zero in quadrant two, but y is still positive. Therefore, our x coordinate is going to be negative one half. The one half we labeled on the, on the circle, on the triangle, was simply a distance. This is a coordinate, negative one half. Y will still be positive. Now we can fill in questions. Sine is Y. Cosine is X. We can even find the reciprocal functions. Remember that cosecant is simply the reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, no matter where uh, we have our angle. This is something you really want to practice. Uh, if you can get good, uh, really good, at finding sine, cosine, trig functions of all these special angles, uh, Unit 5 is going to be incredibly easy for you.